Hey guys, welcome back to MuseThemes.com. This is Ashton. Today we're going to do a quick overview of our new Street Smarts theme. This is a very chic and bright and hip theme, and it was designed with a clothing boutique in mind, but by customizing some content, you can adapt this theme to serve literally limitless purposes. So, it's a responsive theme using fluid width breakpoints, and it adjusts nicely as I scale the browser here up and down. We have an awesome navigation put in place here using a hamburger menu to bring up a light box display, which is fully customizable and also includes this really neat rollover animation on the close button here. On the top of our home page here, we have a slick use of our Infinity Scroll widget, which is giving us some great motion and a real dynamic presence immediately on page load. Scrolling down a bit, we have a number of different images and hyperlinks in responsive and full width format. Down here on our footer, we have a nice, subtle usage of our Instagram feed widget, along with some other social media hyperlinks. Now really quick, I'm going to jump over to our lookbook page. And this here is just one of many examples in this theme of some really cool text content and imagery that's been designed to function very fluidly in responsive Muse. And it's all completely customizable in the project file with just a couple of important parameters to keep in mind. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into Muse and we're going to take a look at some of our options. When you first open the project file, you're going to see four pre-built pages here on top along with a single master page. And I can right click on any of these pages and select page properties. And we can see that we're working with pages of fluid width, which is an important setting for uh, how many of the elements on these pages are actually behaving in the browser. Now I'm going to jump into the master page really quick because this is where you're going to do your navigation styling as well as customizing the Instagram widget that's in the footer. First thing to note here, we're working with a four breakpoint setup. The breakpoints are nice and spread out. We don't need 14 different breakpoints and we certainly don't need them all butted up against each other. This is a really great format to start with in regards to breakpoint setups. Also note that the page width is unlocked as noted by these outward pointing arrows here on the top. This is allowing our responsive imagery to continue expanding beyond this 960 maximum breakpoint that's set up here. Our menu is operating as a standard light box composition. So to make edits, you're simply going to select the composition here on the top right, and then click the blue icon to expand the options panel. And towards the bottom here, there's an option to show light box parts while editing. So click this and you will see your light box appear. And placed inside here, we have our navigation, our close button, as well as some hyperlinked social media graphics, all of which you can revise using the hyperlinks menu here on top. Another thing I want to note is that this navigation is not using a traditional Muse menu widget. So this navigation is not going to update itself when you make changes to the site plan. These are simply text boxes that have hyperlinks assigned to them. So just make sure to adjust this menu accordingly if you're going to be shifting pages around. I can also cycle through my breakpoints here, and the menu is already nicely styled to fit all devices, but just make sure to pay mind to each breakpoint if you're going to be making changes in the menu. Last thing to note here, you may remember the spinning rollover effect that occurred on this menu close button. Well, this is actually accomplished by this animation widget that's placed off here to the left. If I select the close button and then visit my graphic styles panel, Notice that there is a graphic style applied called close underscore btn, and it matches the graphic style that's been typed into the animation widget settings panel here. So to keep this as is, you can simply leave it alone, but you can also feel free to play with the parameters inside to adjust the timing and the motion of the spinning effect. So I'll go ahead back to the settings panel for the composition to close our light box for now. Down here in the footer, we have our Instagram feed widget placed nicely. Now this is an important widget to make sure that you're using the most updated version of. There were some changes made last year that required us to implement some extra information needed inside this widget settings panel to make it function. So just make sure to download the latest version of the Instagram widget from our website if you haven't done so recently. You can adjust the size of your thumbnails by visiting the settings panel of the gallery component here as well as a great selection of customization available in this Lightbox component that you can customize as well. Also, be sure to check out the full tutorial on this widget on our website to get a taste of how powerful this widget actually is. I'll go ahead and jump back to our plan view for now, and let's take a look at some of our individual pages. Clicking to our home page first. Most notably here on top, we have our Infinity Scroll widget, which is giving us that really awesome panoramic motion on the hero photo that we saw on the home page. 
popping open this settings panel, you can see we have the scroll mode set to panoramic, which is meant for an upload of one single very wide photo. And that will continuously loop itself as you saw, but you can also set this to multi-image, which is ideal if you're wanting to scroll through several separate images without the need to combine them on the same image canvas. It's a really powerful widget and it works great on mobile as well, so make sure to give that widget a closer look in our library. Scrolling down a bit, I want to take a look at this imagery here and how it's behaving and responsive. I'm going to go back to our live preview for a moment and we'll click back to our home page. And scrolling down to these four images placed horizontally, they respond beautifully as I move the browser up and down. And not only do they fill the entire width, but they also remain in the same positioning in respect to each other while doing so. So if I click back to Muse, if I select any one of the photos, which are simply placed images on our page, we can see that they're set to responsive width and height. And you're of course welcome to use any images that you want, but to maintain that same behavior, there's three things you need to make sure of. First, you have to make sure that they're sized properly to meet the exact page edges in your breakpoint. Also make sure that they're all set to responsive width and height. And lastly, make sure that there is no corner or side pinning applied to any of them in this case. Just beneath that, we have, instead of a placed image, we have a full width rectangle with an image fill, which can be adjusted using your fill menu here on the top left. And same thing with our location section, and these are complemented nicely with some text and various navigation links. So I'm gonna go back to our plan view and we'll click over to our about page. Now we have a little bit of a different setup going on here. I'm gonna go ahead and reference the live preview again and click over to our about page. Looking at our text and images with the browser expanded right now beyond that 960 breakpoint, everything remains centered, but there's no fluid shift happening, nor is there any needed. But as I scale the browser down, as soon as we hit the edges of the content just close enough, we see a breakpoint shift and then everything now turns into responsive. So let's go back into Muse. I'll explain how this is set up. On this page, we're using the four original breakpoints from the master page, but there's also an additional 1200 breakpoint added in. And in this breakpoint, I can select these text boxes and we can see the resize settings are to none. And we're also working with a center width positioning here in the pinning menu. Now, if you look closely at how this content is sized, it's just wide enough to almost touch the edges of the next breakpoint down, which is 960. And then if we open our 960 breakpoint, we can select another text box. And we're now working with responsive width again. So all those placement settings are what is creating that break into responsiveness just as the browser gets too narrow for the content in its entirety. Now let's jump over to our lookbook page. Similar to our home page, we have some content that's set and placed responsively in order to fill the width of the browser. For our green lines here, we have a simple rectangle using an image fill. And this is just a graphic you'll find in the assets panel in the theme download. The rectangle is set to responsive width along with the other rectangle here with the image fill of the shoes. They're placed on the page, they're touching the page edges, and they're also touching each other right here in the center, which is giving us that really good fluid responsive behavior. And then down here again, we have more placed images with the same setup. All of these set to responsive width and height, and they're all sized to meet the page boundaries. So it's a really cool setup, and as you can see, with the right responsive settings, you can have your content be really engaging and literally look just right on any browser size that it could be viewed on. So I think that's about it, guys. We're gonna hop over to the locations page. I'll touch on this briefly. We have some stock Google Maps widgets placed here with some corresponding text boxes. I'll note that if you click on each of these map widgets, they're pinned to the center of the page. That's gonna keep them positioned properly as you expand the page beyond your highest breakpoint. And then lastly down here, we have a neat little newsletter signup form. So we do hope you enjoy this theme. I think it's a great launching pad for creating responsive content in a variety of different and creative ways. And it's especially good for the purposes of marketing a product or a social presence in a bright and positive way. So have some fun with this one. And if you run into any difficulties, always feel free to drop us a note in support. Thanks for watching.